Recall that our newsboy collected some data over the past several months. Plotting that data and producing a histogram, we see that it's a approximately normal distribution with this right skew and a potential outlier there. But if you calculate the mean and standard deviation of the data with and without that outlier, it really doesn't change the mean and the standard deviation all that much. So let's go ahead and model this particular situation using a normal distribution with a mean of 4405 and a standard deviation of 260. I'm going to use an online calculator just for a moment to help you remember some things about the normal distribution. In our case here, we've got a mean of 4405 and a standard deviation of 260. If we know a probability, then we can find out the x value that is associated with that probability. Here I put in a probability of 0.75, and it says that the x that matches up with that is 4580. If we put in a probability of 25%, then the x is further down on the scale there, about 4230. So how can we use this information to come up with the demand for our newsboy? Well, if we can come up with a way in Excel to generate randomly these probabilities, then we can use the normal distribution to tell us what the x or the demand would be for that probability. Now let's do that. Excel has a pretty good tool for generating random numbers, and it is the RAND function, which is just R-A-N-D and a opening and closing parentheses and nothing uh, in between. And that's what I put in this cell that I label random variable. For dealing with the normal distribution, if we have a probability, the function we need to use is the norm inverse. And I've got it here, and I'm just going to click on it for a second, and it'll open up and it'll tell us, remind us that the arguments for the norm inverse are a probability, the mean, and the standard deviation. So we have those now. We're going to use the random variable to give us the probability, and then we know the mean and standard deviation thanks to the new boys' records. I'm going to manually recalculate the spreadsheet. You can see every time I do, the random variable changes, and it's always going to be between 0 and 1, which, of course, allows us to use that as a probability. And the norm inverse is returning x values based on that probability that are going to fit into that distribution that our good news boy provided us with. Now here, what I've done, and I like to do in my model, I like to build my random variables outside my model and then link to them so that it keeps my model fairly simple. The only thing I've added, you can see here I'm, I've linked down here to B25, which is this output of the norm inverse. I wanted to round that because we can't sell fractional newspapers. And I use the round function to zero decimal places to turn that fractional value there of 4496.67 into a discrete value. And you can see as we recalculate this that we don't see the profit changing very often because so far the demand is higher than the amount that our newsboy is buying. There, I finally hit one that has the demand lower than the quantity and it shows his profit uh, changed a bit. So how do we automate that? You can't just manually calculate, you know, click recalculate, 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 and capture these values. There's a way to do that, and I'll show you in the next video. There's a suggestion I need to give you about using these random variables in a decision model. Think very carefully about the variable in your model that you are trying to simulate. In this case, we're simulating demand, and demand logically and happily could be very large, but we don't ever want it to be negative. That's not really realistic that, in this case, people wouldn't bring back newspapers. So we want to prevent demand from being zero. With the current setup here, the mean of 4,200 and standard deviation of 200, we're okay. That's, that's a pretty high mean and a small standard deviation. If you recall from your statistics, if you're three sigma, three standard deviations below the mean, that only happens 3% of the time would you be further away from the mean of that. So if you look up here, I've added a column that gives the statistics for this demand column in our 
simulating simulation model. And you can see the minimum right now is 3565 and the max 4870. But if we had a much higher standard deviation, much more variation in demand, which could happen, you can see now that the simulation in our 1,000 trials, some of them are going as low as negative 407, which is not realistic. And we wouldn't want that to show up in our model. That causes our uh, minimum profit to go negative. You know, we're losing money because the demand is negative. So we need to stop demand from going below zero. There's a good way of doing that in Excel. Got a neat function that's called max. I'm going to start typing MA. There's max. And it says it returns the largest value in a set of values, which is what we want. So I'm going to double click on max to select it. And the first variable, which we already had in there, is our random variable for demand. But we want to put a second variable in there of zero and then close that and hit enter and now we have the formula max of either the random variable for demand or zero whichever is larger and you can see over here in our model that now our minimum value of demand stops at zero which is what you want remember that look at your variables in your decision model and make sure your random variable is not going to return an unrealistic value